Hello everyone. We have a 67 year old man who is brought to the emergency department due to nausea, vomiting and increasing pain in abdomen over the last three hours. Short history. For the last four weeks ago, he was discharged from hospital following an inpatient admission for acute myocardial infarction. At the moment, he, he has fever and pulse is tachycardia is there and the thing is irregular pulse is there. That is a very important point to be noted and, and of course one more notable point, he had acute MI four weeks ago. Well, at the moment the patient is in severe distress, bowel sound are decreased, diffuse abdominal tenderness but is more pronounced over the lower right quadrant. If you look into the lab reports, glucose is high and there is bicarbonate is low that indicate metabolic acidosis is there. Metabolic acidosis, rest all reports are normal. And if you look into the other reports, a myelase level is increased. Lipase level is in the normal range. Now, most likely diagnosis of this patient is Answer is bubble ischemia is the most appropriate answer. Why? This patient's presentation is suggestive of acute mesentic ischemia. And this usually occurs in the center of setting of abrupt arterial occlusion. Now this occlusion can occur from maybe a embolus from cardiac in the atrial fibrillation. Well, this patient has irregular pulse. That can be a contributory, valvular lesion, cardiovascular aneurysm, acute thrombosis due to peripheral arterial disease or low cardiac output state. Now, this patient likely to develop left ventricle thrombosis after his recent MI. This is one more contributory factor. So, atrial fibrillation as well as acute myocardial infarction, there are two predisposing factors which can lead to clot formation, which can lead to subsequent embolism. This thromba then embolizes to mesentric artery. Patient with acute mesentric ischemia typically experience sudden onset of severe periambulacral pain like in this case. The pain is only 3 hours and it is progressively increasing. Pain appear to be out of proportion to examination finding. It is a classical thing that we see in uh, mesentric ischemia. If ischemia is prolonged, patient may develop more focal abdominal tenderness or there can be peritoneal signs later on which in the form of guarding and rebound tenderness. These two findings, they, they indicate peritoneal signs are there. Lab studies typically show leukocytosis, hemoconcentration, elevated amylase, it is there. Metabolic acidosis due to increased lactate level, bicarbonate level 14 I discussed earlier, that indicate metabolic acidosis. Patient with evidence of bubble infarction should undergo immediate operative evaluation. Okay, otherwise diagnosis can be confirmed radiologically by CT angiography, we can do it. But it is, it is essential to do the needful urgently, it is, it is a surgical emergency. Treatment include embolectomy and vascular bypass or endovascular thrombolysis can be done. In addition, patients should be started on broad spectrum antibiotics. In the absence of active bleeding, anticoagulation to reduce the risk of clot expansion can be done. This is typical angiogram, mesentric angiogram. You can see there is a blockage here and there is a huge vascular tree is there but there is no vascular tree on this side. Let's look into other option. Acute appendicitis is uncommon in elderly person. If it occurs, the presentation is acute. In addition, the presence of perforation and significant hypotension patient with appendicitis rarely develop metabolic acidosis unless perforation is there. Okay. Well, before I proceed further, I have certain questions for you. Write down the answer. There are five questions. What is McBurney point? What is Hamburger sign? What is Soas sign? Operator sign and Rolf Singh's sign. What are these signs and they are seen in which condition? Write down the answer. 
Well, McBurney Point. It is located one third of the distance between from the superior anterior superior alex spine to the umbilicus. It is the point of tenderness in acute appendicitis. So, if you look into this this abdomen, umbilicus. This is let's say uh, anterior superior alex spine, and this and if you look into this, so one third of distance from anterior. So we divide into three part. So this is the part of McBurney point. Anterior superior alex spine, umbilicus, and one third. This is classically site of tenderness for a case of acute append appendicitis. Hamburger sign, if patient want to eat, consider diagnosis other than appendicitis. It's a beautiful sign, patient has appendicitis. You are making clinical diagnosis, but patient want to eat something you are making a wrong diagnosis, you revise. This is a hamburger sign because appendicitis patient never want to eat. So as sign, you try to extend the hip joint, okay? So that will lead to right lower quadrant pain and this is seen in psoas abscess. It may also be there in acute appendicitis. So you extend the leg and patient, you patient develop pain. Operator sign passive internal rotation of the flex hip lead leading to right lower quadrant pain. It is seen in acute appendicitis. Rovsing sign deep palpation of the of the left lower quadrant leading to right lower quadrant pain. It is seen in acute appendicitis. So you are pressing in the left lower quadrant and your patient is feeling in the right side. That is Rovsing sign. Well, acute pancreatitis is the other option. It's a wrong answer. This present with nausea, pain abdomen, pain usually radiates to the back. Normal lipase makes uh, acute pancreatitis less likely as lipase is more sensitive and more specific than amylase. But in this case, amylase lipase level is low, but it's ruled out. But now again, I have a few questions for you. What is Gray Turner sign, Cullen sign, and Fox sign? Of course, these signs are seen in acute pancreatitis. Write down the answer. Well, as far as Gray Turner sign, bluish discoloration in the flank that we see in acute pancreatitis. Cullen sign, periumbilical area due to retroperitoneal leak, leak of blood from pancreas in hemorrhagic pancreatitis. And fox sign discoloration in the inguinal area, again seen in acute pancreatitis. Option D is incorrect, DKA. This can present with GI manifestation and acidosis. Usually developed in patients with type 1 diabetes, does not tend to cause localized abdominal tenderness. Pain abdominal is a feature, but that is to diffuse pain, not the localized pain. Now I have a question for you, write down the answer. What happened to serum potassium level in DKA? Well, answer initially, it is hyperkalemia. This is due to metabolic acidosis. But when we use insulin drip with saline, the potassium level come down and it may even go to hypokalemia with the treatment. So, to nutshell, hyperkalemia and later on hypokalemia can occur. So, in each case, so later on, we have to infuse potassium, otherwise, potassium level will fall drastically. Well, in this case, it's unlikely because the sugar value is it uh, below 250 milligram percent. So, it's very unlikely to develop having DKA. Moreover, in DKA, small breathing is a feature which is again due to metabolic acidosis. Finally, peptic ulcer perforation does, uh, does not lead to localize uh, to the right quadrant. It's a diffuse pain. Typically uh, not accompanied by metabolic acidosis unless there is hemodynamic instability with hypovolemia, hypotension or impending shock. Anyway, even if you are suspecting perforation, what you will do? What the you will go for X ray abdomen? What finding you will get in X ray abdomen? Maybe X ray chest also you can do it. Write down the answer. What finding you will be getting in this case? Answer is gas under right side of diaphragm. 
this question come in all the exams throughout the world. It's virtually diagnostic of any perforation of any uh, part of intestine, maybe stomach, maybe anything else, maybe ulcerative colitis, any, there are so many things which can rupture. That is the diagnostic you are guess under diaphragm. Now let's uh, talk about last minute revision point before I conclude this question. Point to be remember for acute mesentic ischemia. Presentation rapid onset of periumbilical pain, often severe, pain out of proportion to examination finding. This point two is one of the classical catch point that you got to remember in mesentic ischemia. Hematochesia, there it can is a late complication. It's a late complication. Atherosclerosis, acute or on chronic, risk factor are embolic so thrombus vegetation or hypercoagable disorder can be there. Lab finding, there may be leukocytosis, amylase may be raised, phosphate level may be raised, but they are non-specific. Metabolic acidosis due to lactate increase. We diagnose by CT scan or M CT or MR angiography. Mesentic angiography, if diagnostic, is unclear. Conventional angiography. Golden line to remember, acute mesentic ischemia is commonly due to abrupt arterial occlusion from cardiac embolic event, maybe ventricular thromboembolism. If ischemia is prolonged, patient may develop more focal finding due to infarction, perforation, or peritonitis. Lab finding include leukocytosis, elevated hemoglobin, elevated amylase, and metabolic acidosis. Well, I hope you liked the session. Just to inform you, we have following courses for you. Smart Medicine, there are 350 hours of pre-recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine. It includes all super specialty and allied subject, covering A to Z, including basic concept about every topic. Second, we have tests and discussion. There are more than 1,000 questions which, with discussion of the questions, sample question and discussion you saw in this session. Now, third thing is Medicine Simplified, which is a textbook of medicine. Harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine, but it is too vast. Reading one page of Harrison, you need half an hour. To understand, you need two hours, but you need only two minutes to forget what was written in that page. Then what is the solution? We have Medicine Simplified. It's a textbook of medicine, but so-called mini Harrison. It's a summary of what you need to read from Harrison. The book is available in Amazon also. Now, these three things are more than enough for your MD, DNB Medicine and Family Medicine final exam preparation, need SS exam preparation. You don't need to read any other book. These three are complete in all the aspects. For more detail, you can contact at this number. It's a mobile ad, as well as WhatsApp. And this is my personal email ID. Anybody want to reach to me, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you very much.